welcome to episode 106 of the Cat Lady Podcast. My name is Andrea, also known as the Cat Lady. That's two T's, C-A-T-T, which stands for Craft All the Things. It is February 4th, 2020. I am coming to you from another dreary Michigan day. Seriously. The sun was out for like... sun came out on Sunday. It was out for like two seconds yesterday. But I mean, I just, I don't even remember what the sun looks like. <laughs> To be honest, uh, Sunday was actually very nice. It got up to 50 yesterday. It was in the mid-40s, but now it's raining cold again, and it's going to snow again in the next couple days. So here we are. I am ready for spring. It was Groundhog's Day. Groundhog said early spring. I've seen memes already going around saying, early spring, except for you, Michigan. You just do whatever you want, because that's pretty much how it is here. So anyways, that is my weather rant for the day. Thank you for new and returning new viewers. If you are new, thanks for checking me out. I hope you enjoy what you see. I am primarily a knitting and fiber related podcast. Uh, I do, but I do lots of other crafts as well. I haven't lately. I've been doing a lot of knitting. <clears throat> so right now I'm currently a more knitting podcast, but of course I go through my phases and I'll get into spinning and sewing and cricket making, cricket crafting, whatever, and all sorts of fun things. So and of course, if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for always coming back and supporting this podcast. So you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry, Facebook as the Cat Lady. There's a Ravelry group, which I do. I knit along, make alongs, and give away prizes. Uh, Facebook group, I just, you know, post on there as much as possible. Uh, usually, I, I try to post exclusively on Facebook, but most of the time I'm funneling Instagram posts to Facebook posts, so... So always a work in progress, but uh, I, I'm very active on Instagram as the cat lady, and again, that's two T's, C-A-T-T, -T, so T-H-E-C-A-T-T-L-A-D-Y. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, obviously, as the crafty cat lady, and email me at craftycatlady at gmail.com if you have any questions. So into podcast news, I have a make-along going on right now. It is the whip-along, so works in progress. Uh, anything that is considered a work in progress starting January 1st, through the end of March, I think is what I've decided. Um, if I feel like I would like more participation in the group, honestly, I'm, I need to, again, I need to work on my participation as well and Ravelry and everything. I haven't looked at the Ravelry group in a while. I know there are some whips in there. I've been terrible at finishing my whips, like I said I was, so I keep casting on more things, not finishing the things I said I was going to finish, so. Anyway, so get those whips into the Ravelry thread. You can double dip, so I know there's a lot of stash buster make-alongs and then-alongs going on, so if, you know, you're using old stash and maybe that's a whip as well. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying, but you can double dip is what I'm saying. So anything that is considered a whip was made prior to January 1st. I think I might have said that wrong at first. So anything prior to January 1st that you had started and are finished then. Oh, enter that finished object into the group thread and also if you frog something so if there's something that you did finish but you frogged or it was half done and you frogged it you can count that as well because you know what uh sometimes that just what needs to be done uh one post per finished item unlimited items are welcome knitting crochet spinning weaving sewing paper crafts anything i'm making this like a full-on make along i mean i know if you are primarily doing other crafts. You may not be on Ravelry, but you know, this is primarily a knitting crafting group. So if you uh, have any other crafts out there that you're working on and you finish, feel free to post them. Uh, must be a member of the Ravelry group to, to win. So just click join group on Ravelry. Um, and I have prizes. So the main prize is a 12 set mini skein of squishy soft 20 or 80 percent merino 20 percent nylon 10 gram minis from happy little yarn she doesn't dye anymore unfortunately but some really pretty colors here a project bag from made by me so either the teal kitties or the peach kitties you can choose I feel like those go, both of those go well with this yarn set. And then a set of stitch markers from Neat Tea's Porch. So there's her information. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. I think eight of them in there. 
cute little pretty pink, pinkish, purpley, bluish touch markers. And if you are a maker and have anything you'd like to donate for prizes, please contact me. I'm always happy to accept prizes to do more of these make-alongs and everything. So obviously I am not making any money from any of these things. So anything that I provide is either donated or I'm providing them with my own funding and I am shipping them with my own funding. So I appreciate all the help that I get to continue to do these fun make-alongs because I enjoy them. I know a lot of people enjoy them. I enjoy giving away prizes. So I always, but I do need to do this uh, with support. So if you know of anybody that's a maker that would like to donate a prize, that would be great. Um, so thank you so much for my, our donation from Happy Little Yarn and Nitsi's Porch. So on to finished objects. So for knitting, I finished the last I showed you last week. I showed you the Sadie Poof, which is the mini kitty poof by Molly Rivera. Um, this was a Knit Picks pattern. And then I was in the middle of the Devo poof. So if you don't know, Sadie and Devo are my cats. Sadie is black and white, Devo is orange and white. So there is my, ooh, he looks very fluorescent on the camera. <laughs> so here is my Devo poof. These were super quick to knit up. I, they knit up in like in an hour or so. Uh, the faces are okay. I feel like I would redo them again, but whatever, they're, they are what they are. Kids think they're adorable. Everyone else seemed to think they're adorable, but I'm, I'm of course my own worst critic. So there we go. Sit back here. I forgot to grab my little sign today. Usually I have my little sign that says cat lady. But put my kitties back there. Gonna be my little sidekicks. So I finished those. Those are made out of Hometown USA line brand yarn. That's a bulky, super bulky. I don't know if it's bulky or super bulky. I think it's super bulky yarn. Uh, it was like size 15 needles. So uh, it is a paid for pattern. You can get it on Ravel or you can get it on Knit Picks. So. I think I snagged it for free when uh, Knit Picks was doing some kind of offer, so had that in my queue for a while. Uh, so another sort of finish, sort of whip, this is my ongoing project, is my blanket squares. I am behind again because I have so many other things going on that, you know, I just I got so many other things going on. But I finished squares, so last I showed you I was I had just finished a row, so I have finished squares 25 through 32. So we have all those done, so that, what is that, uh, 30, 31, so through February 1st. So today's the 4th, so I am, second, I am if I don't do any today, I will be three behind. I did three at once this weekend to catch up on the first during a movie. And this is good movie knitting or TV knitting because it's so mindless and simple. I mean, I do screw up, but even when I just screw up, it's easy to fix because they're so small. So I like to like save, kind of save this for sitting down. Like, so we watched the Lion King live action Lion King movie this weekend to, on Disney Plus. We've already seen it. In the theater so it wasn't a big deal I didn't really need to pay attention anyways and it's Lion King it's like you already know what happens <laughs> so I did these three squares while watching Lion King and it was just easy to do while watching a movie so but I should try to at least do a square or two today we'll see see if I get to it I got a lot of other things going on so uh, my other finished object is the Willow Lane hat and this was a work in progress last I showed you oh yeah I took off my marker because I've been wearing it but I put a stitch marker on where I left off and I was about it's probably about here so I did quite a bit and I kind of whipped it whipped it out so there is I'm gonna show you the cable pattern or the patterning this is a pattern by Brandy Miller designs the the pattern is a little hard to see with the darker yarn but when I wear it it's not so bad uh, and I did show pictures of I will post a picture of the pictures that I showed on Instagram it does go with this big old pom-pom. <laughs> Emily was in the shower. <laughs> I wear my hats all day. Like I'm living a hat. If I don't have my hair up in some sort of fashion, I typically have a hat up, hat on. Mainly because I'm usually cold. So <laughs> I had my hat on with the pom-pom on. I actually meant to attach this before I recorded it, but I forgot. Uh, and she was 
she was in her shower and she showered and she got out and I looked at her hair and she still had soap in her hair. Well, David had already jumped into the shower to take his shower. So I sent her into my bathroom to go rinse out her hair. So then she's, oh, check my hair, make sure it's fine. Well, I leaned into the shower to check her hair and I was just, oh, what was it? No, she's like, there's something on the floor. It was like a little like fuzzy, whatever. And she was like freaking out. So that's what it was. Uh, so I reached down to like pick the fuzzy off the floor and the water just started like going all over my hat and all over the pom-pom. So I took off the pom-pom and kind of shook it out and I had to let the hat dry. So, but this is why we have removable pom-poms so that we can wash the hat. And, and I made this pom-pom, so I will talk about this in a little bit under a different category because this is still knitting. So, uh, so yeah, this is a really nice hat. I rambled too long about that, but there's look at the pattern. And this is Madeline Tosh Light in the Mandala, Mandala colorway. It is a single ply. I love, I love, I love single ply. I don't know why. It's very soft. I mean, that's probably why. And it just, oh, the, to the tones in this color. This actually was a frogged project. I used this yarn to make a uh, shawl that I didn't like and I frogged it. And now it's a lovely hat that I do love and wear all the time. So it's, and the, the, the shawl was completely finished and blocked and washed and everything and woven in and I kept it for a good, for a little while and then I frogged it. So, you know, it's never too late to take apart something if you really like the yarn and you don't like the object it is. So that is my PSA for today. Uh, okay, well, works in progress. So I bet you are dying to know what I decided with my socks. So I started a pair of socks and then I got a book from the library about how to knit better socks and I wanted to do a heel flap and gusset and blah blah blah. Well I got all the calculations I needed and realized the socks I started needed to be made differently. So I was deciding if I was going to frog that sock and start over or if I was just going to continue for this pair of socks and then the next pair of socks I will do all the new stuff. Well, I continued the sock. So I thought about it. I've been wearing, you know, all my hand knit socks and I've been wearing the ones that are made with sock links and they fit good. They really do. They fit fine. I like them. I really don't have any issues with them. So, you know, I figured, okay, well, you know what? I'm, I'm, or I had, I had gotten, so I was here where the marker is. So, you know, that was a decent amount. I already don't, I don't like casting on the toe and all that stuff. So I had done all that stuff and I liked how it was looking. So I just decided to go with it. So this is where I am. I'm ready for the heel. That's why I stopped because <laughs> it's not mindless anymore. So I'm ready for the heel on this one. This is a Gale's Art Sock Blank. It was a lava lamp colorway. It looks like this. So she has it set up so it kind of looks like, so it's kind of stripes. This is really fun. So you got this cool uh, alternating color stripes and the gradient color. Oh, so pretty. So this is where I left off, ready for the heel. And then I put it away and haven't touched it since. <laughs> And it is in my bag I've made myself. I like this size because I have this little sock ruler and it actually fits in here perfect. So, but I really, this is one of my favorite bags. I like this fabric. That's my socks. And then let's see. So I am, oh, I guess that's not a work in, well, it's always a, it is a work in progress. It's kind of both. Another half and half, work in progress slash finished object. So I'm working on a design. Oh shoot, my battery's running low, so hopefully I don't run out. If I do, I will have to record on my phone. So I apologize in advance if I run out of time. I probably will. Anyways, uh, I am designing a new design. I'd really like to work on incorporating more designs. I have, technically I have two. I have one that I really worked hard on and the other one I kind of just threw together and that one's free and it's a headband. The other one is my twinsy shawl that I really liked and put a lot of work into. So this one is also proving to be a lot of work but I really like the way they turned out. So these are a pair of fingerless, mitt, fingerless mitts and I believe I showed one off last time. Um, so it, they're done but the pattern writing is not done and it's proving to be very challenging because I'd like to do this right. This is my goal for 2020. If you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it right, okay? So you're not gonna half, half fit, half blanket. <laughs> it's a family friendly show, right? Um, 
So I want to make sure I have multiple sizes. So because originally I was just going to post it as one size. But, you know, I want to do it right. And people have different size hands. And my hands are probably, well, I think after looking at a chart, my hands are about medium. So, I mean, they're average. They're an average size hand. But, you know, I, I'd like people to be, I'd like more people to be able to have access to my patterns. So, this is... And I have two versions. I have a DK and a worsted. I just started with worsted because I was using up leftover yarn to match my hat and cowl that I made previously. But I really like this yarn. I love this yarn and I thought this yarn would complement the idea of the pattern better. And this is DK. Um, the stitch counts aren't much different. So looking at my chart that I made versus on sizing, it's not going to be much extra work. It wasn't much extra work to convert it to DK and then I don't yeah, so then I, but now I have to work on converting to different sizes in worsted and DK, and I don't know. I, I'm getting myself into a lot more work than I should have, but I love the way this turned out. So we have a little, like, bow motif here with your mesh, and my inspiration is kind of like a 80s, kind of 80s kind of vibe. So the kind of mini mitt, not really for function, you know, this, I mean, it keep you a little warm, but not really. Your hands are all exposed and you got the mesh in the middle. However, I thought these would perfectly fit perfectly over a pair of those little stretchy knit gloves that you get from, like, the dollar store. And you could wear these on top if you want to wear them for warmth. Um, so these are the DK ones, and this is the Lemonade Shop yarn in the Bad Day Sparkle DK. This was my very first Etsy purchase of yarn. I had bought a couple things on Etsy before, but this was my first yarn purchase, and it was one of those things where it was like, shop update, you gotta get on at 10 a.m., and you know, I wanted the fingering weight, but this was all I could get, so. And I made a little scarf out of it, so I do have a scarf, little bow ascot type thing. Um, and then these are the worsted version. And of course, there is a right and a left because of the patterning, so I had to figure that out for like the thumb and it was definitely a learning experience. And then trying to write things in clear directions that people are going to understand instead of just me knowing what I want to do. So these are the worsted. Um, again, they're very, they're very similar and the patterns aren't off by much. You know, there's a couple added stitches into this one. So technically this worsted or this DK pattern is a equivalent to like a large in the worsted. So I just have to take this medium DK and that equals large in worsted. And yeah, so I know it's confusing. But I love them. I really do. I'm going to need testers and I'm going to need testers for multiple sizes. And so I have a few people that have already shown interest. I really need serious testers that are good at note taking and will answer some questions and surveys because I, especially with the multiple sizes, I am not going to knit each one in a, a different size. So I'm going to rely on my testers to make sure these sizings come out right. So, you know, I will have all the details probably post on Instagram at first. Uh, I know there is a Ravelry group that is just for testing, so I don't know if I'll head over there. We'll see what I need. So please, if you are interested, email me, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and you'll hear more information, but I still have to write the pattern, so. Uh, okay, <laughs> so that was my work in progress for my mitts so that are finished, but not finished. I am working on a swatch for my Sparkling Cider Hat by Woolen Vine. Uh, I, this isn't even close to being cast on because I have so many other things going on, but I really wanted to see what it was going to look like. So this is using this alpaca silk that I got from Amy from Happy Little Yarn. Are we seeing? I don't know if we're seeing it or not. Hello. Stop looking for my face. Nope, that didn't do it. Come on, you can do it. It might be doing it, but I'm here, let's see. Okay, whatever, it's alpaca silk. Uh, Shibui, or no, not Shibui, what is it? Uh, fiber space. 
Fiber Spates Cumulus in Storm Cloud color. And then I am using Nipfix Capretta, which is a MCN, Reno Cashmere Nylon base, in the, oh boy, I forgot the colorway of that one. I don't remember the colorway. It is all, it is, no, I don't have it anywhere. I will list the colorway in my show notes. <laughs> okay, um, sorry, I'm looking at the time. Time, the, the time is getting close to the camera shutting off, the battery's flashing at me, so I don't know what's happening. But this is my sample. So this is the two strands held together. Of course, it's really dark on the camera. And there's beads in there. I don't know if you can see the beads or not. Where are they? They're at the top there. So, and this is just in a, you know, a stockinette strip, so the pattern's gonna have a little bit of more detail in it where the bead goes, so it might be uh, easier to see. I feel the beads get a little lost, but you know, they're just a little accent, so we're going with it. But I love it. It's so soft. Oh, it's so soft. So that'll be a sparkling cider hat eventually. And... Okay, now I lost my paperwork here. Okay. And last but not least, I cast on another hat because, you know, I can't control myself. So this is a living in my basket because this is a perfect little project basket. Uh, oh, of course I'm in the middle of the row because I was trying to figure something out, but... <sighs> Seriously. Bad, bad podcaster. So this is a Barley Light by Tin Can Knits. Very simple fingerling weight hat. I already have one. Uh, it's stuck in it. And then there's this garter panel in the front. Free pattern on Ravelry. Here, I can probably show you a better picture. There's the back. But look, and we got some interesting, like, uh, pooling kind of going on there. The colors. So nice blues and browns and the sparkle. It is Miss Babs Estralita base in the Rhinebeck 2019 color. There's that. And there is a better picture of the hat. Originally, the first one I made, I did the... Uh, da, 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 da. There's a two sizes, two adult sizes. What is it? Small, adult, small, medium, and adult large. And the first time I did the adult large, and to be honest, I feel like that hat is a little loose. It's not bad, I would do it again, but there's only a few few stitches different, so I did the small, medium this time. And it fits fine. I feel like it's gonna, because I mean, after you block it, it kind of stretches, and the more you wear it, it kind of stretches out, so I feel like that's gonna be totally fine. So that is a twinsy project with my friend Jen. So if you are a longtime follower, you know that Jen, the, the formerly the Uncreative Crafter podcast, who is also Storm Coast on Ra Ravelry and Instagram, uh, we do a lot of twinsy projects. Uh, my shawl design, the twinsy shawl, was named after our relationship with knitting things together. So we get, usually do matching yarn, or we do matching projects, or we do both. So this is a matching yarn and project. So we are both doing the Barley Light in the Rhinebeck 2019 colorway. So. Um, we haven't done a twinsie in a while, so it's, uh, it's always a fun time. Uh, she has a lot of other projects going on too, so I'm trying not to like, because usually when I get a hat like this on the needles, I just go, 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 so I'm trying to take my time on it because I know she's taking her time on hers, so, <laughs> which it's fine because I do have a million other things to do, so. Uh, that is it for knitting and finished objects and works in progress. So the only last thing I have to show that is a makeable thing is the pom-poms. You saw the one. So I made these faux firm pom-poms. These are huge and amazing. <laughs> so this is a black one that I weighed for the Willow Lane hat. And then originally I had a white pom on this. This is the hat by Espace Tri Tricot. So pull the wool over, I think. I think so, yes. Getting confused with the cowl name and the uh, hat name, but I think this was pull the wool over. And I wanted a big old pom pom because her picture with the sample has a big old pom pom, and this turned out huge. <laughs> now, technically, these are made with the same template, so this must just have a longer length of fur, but I don't know if this one's perfect. So, this is a seven inch circle cut out of the fur and then turned into a pom pom. And this one is just it's huge, it's huge. And I have pictures on Instagram if you want to see. Um, maybe I'll show one, pop one in there too, of this one, since I did the other one. Um, but yeah, I love, I love 
I love them. Oh, this one's like, this one's luxuriously soft. Like, oof. So. So that is all of my makeable things. So, on to stash. So not a lot of stash, but a very exciting stash. Uh, actually, you know what? Hold that thought. We're going to take a quick break. I'm going to reset my camera, and I will be back. Okay, we're back. Still confused about my camera's doing things, so I don't know what's going to happen. Probably should just switch to my phone, but I like to live on the edge, so here we go. So, on to stash. So, of course, everyone knows I love Star Wars. And everyone right now knows the hot Star Wars thing is Baby Yoda. And so this isn't exactly what I wanted, but I just took what I could get. So there's this maker that, so Happy Little Yarn on her podcast posted or uh, showed off something she purchased from someone at Etsy. And it was this big wooden pin of a Baby Yoda. I'm like, oh my god, I want it. Uh, of course it was out of stock, it's one of those things, you know, you gotta be there for the shop update, blah blah blah, and she's doing a bunch of shows, and yada yada yada. Like, when are you going to have the pin? She's like, I don't know, just stay tuned. Well, she instead came out with the Progress Keeper set of the Baby Yoda. So this is, and, and she had a sticker, which the sticker had been available, so I just kept the sticker in my cart until her shop update. So here's the sticker, and this is what the pin looked like, it was a big big wooden pin. I may, may not, maybe not this big, maybe a little bit smaller, but you like pin it to a hat or something. So and it was a wood car or wood cut baby Yoda. Isn't that adorable? But she made the stitch markers, which has, and it's called baby, what's it called? Baby Yo, as in yarn over, I guess, so play on words. And the Ram DeLorean, so as in Ram sheep, so instead of Mandalorian. So these are oh, the stitch holder, the st progress keepers. So it's a, it's the same wood cutout, but it's just a tiny progress keeper instead. So it's so cute. And the maker is DK Graham, and she is on Etsy. So there is her information. So you know, I, t I I'll use these, and I love them, and they're cute. I still want the pin, but uh, these are adorable. So. That is my splurge purchase. I had to set my alarm because then again it was one of those shop updates. Got to be there at the right time. And so, got those. Um, this is sort of stash. It's not my stash, but I got some uh, books from the library. I think I showed off one of the books last time when I was talking about my socks. But this one has been a really good one. So the Beginner's Guide to Writing Knitting Patterns. So I got a lot of good information out of this. And this same Kate Etherly, so the same author as the sock sock pattern book. Um, and I, let's see. Oh yeah, here's so here's the sock book. Custom socks knit fit your feet. And then I picked up uh, 750 knitting stitches, the ultimate knit stitch bible. I haven't really looked too much into that one. And then this one, I just just is way too complicated. Anyways, the Japanese knitting stitch bible amazing patterns in here but I don't think I'm ready for that yet so that one but I have I just renewed them so I have them for another couple weeks so I've been perusing through those so it's not really a stash to keep but I might end up buying those so the knitting design book and the sock book and that's it for stash so not much purchases this week this last couple weeks so since I last recorded, there has been a zillion podcasts that I have posted, So I have, and I am not caught up on all of them, but uh, go check out if you are looking for things to listen to, the Victoria Knits podcast, the Cat Knit podcast, Mint Rain podcast, Geektastic Fibers, and I will put links in the show notes. Oh, I don't think I did show notes for the last episode, so I need to get, get better with that. Uh, the Felicity Yarn Studio, a Lefty Knitter podcast, Happy Little Yarn, Joey Scarf, Flame and Fiber. Crafty Gnome Bad has a new pattern release. So Kim, she released a pair of fingerless mitts as well, but crochet, so check those out. The Wayward Skein, The Yarn Curator, The Reluctant Sisters, and Chevy Rell's stuff. So a few of those I still have to catch up on, but they are on my queue, ready to go. Uh, so please support uh, other podcasters if you 
so inclined and have time to listen. So life in review, not much exciting as far as day-to-day -day things. So as far as just cleaning and Cub Scouts and all the regular stuff, nothing, nothing really exciting. Uh, last Sunday, yes, Sunday, we Jim and I went down to the D Detroit Institute of Arts and saw a, they have a Detroit Film Theater, it's called. They had Oscar-nominated film shorts. Uh, so we watched all the Oscar-nominated animated film shorts and the non-animated live-action film shorts. So it was about two and a half hours, three hours of uh, viewing. And so, and then we, and then we went with uh, Jim's family slash co-workers. So he works with his family. So it was his cousin and his aunt and uncle and then other co-workers and their spouses and everything. So there was a pretty decent group of us. And we went out to a really good German dinner. Oh my gosh, so there's a German restaurant in Detroit. It was like amazing. So, oh, so good, so good. So that was fun. But for huge news, sort of, not news yet, but in the works, uh, I am really considering starting a dyeing business, a yarn dyeing business. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen I've kind of poked things around, like asking questions and talking to some people and whatever, and putting out surveys and whatever. So. Yeah, it's scary. It's really scary. It's exciting. It's really exciting. I kind of flip-flop between being super excited and terrified. So it's a little stressful, um, but it's, it's a slow process. I'm still working out things with, uh, I have a letter email out to my accountant on things. I need to open wholesale accounts. I need to open a bank account. You know, I need to do all this stuff. I need to get supplies. I have nothing. So I'm starting from absolute scratch. Because, I mean, I've had things in place for this, but you need to invest some money to get the equipment. So I just, that's what I've, it's always been holding me back. Well, we have an opportunity to do this now. I've cleaned up the basement and made some space. So it's going to be a slow process of acquiring materials, of, you know, actually dying and getting a stock going, and then starting an Etsy store, and just, I don't know, it's... I'm not hugely businessy, I'm an artist, and that's how I've been my entire life. I've been into crafts, I've been into arts, I have degrees in photography and graphic design. I obviously am into the artistic things. <laughs> so business is not my strong suit. Math and pattern designing, like actual the math part of that, is not my strong suit. Coming up with the ideas, fun, can do. Coming up with colorways, I'm hoping is going to be fun and can do. It's just going to, and doing it, but it's just the actual selling and that's the part that's tricky. So I have talked to a handful of indie dyers and I am so grateful for everyone who reached out and took the time to talk with me. So I thank you so much. Um, I'm not looking to like make, you know, a million dollars, obviously. I, I, my expectations are on the low side, which, and they're in check. You know, I, this isn't going to be money moneymaker. This isn't going to be, you know, qu a qu quick moneymaker either. This is going to take years to build. Money's going to go back. I, and I, all money that comes in is going to go back in the business for at least a few years. There's just no question about that. My end game is to be able to work at home and be able to uh, supplement our income that my husband brings home to have a family vacation and go do some extra fun things that we may not do usually because we don't want to, you know, over overspend or whatever. So, you know, we, we do fine, but I want to contribute to our household is really the end game. I went on that interview at the knitting shop and, you know, I am prohibited to working outside the home comfortably because of my schedule, because I need to be here for the kids. And this is, you know, this is why I'm a stay at home mom. I need to be here when there's snow days. I need to be here when they're sick. I need to be here at a certain time when they get home. They're still young. They can't, you know, we, and I'm not going to pay someone to watch my kids while I go and make money that I'm just going to have to turn around and pay to that person who is watching my kids, <laughs> you know? So, I could work from home doing in the business that I am passionate about that would be an incredible feeling so I appreciate everyone's support uh, I oh I have a survey out on what your yarn dyeing preferences are if you haven't seen it on Instagram or Facebook I will link it into the box below here on YouTube so please 
feel free to contribute your thoughts on uh, purchasing indie yarn from Indie Dyers. So, again, I'm hoping to get a mailing list started, uh, so offer coupons for yarn, coupons for patterns, and updates and everything. So it's a, it's a, gonna be a lot of work, and it's gonna take some time. And I am thankful for all your support, and I appreciate all your support. So, with that. I will see you next time. I hope you get to craft all the things, and I will hopefully see you in a couple weeks. So, and stay tuned for any crazy important updates. I will, of course, come come directly to here and update them. So, thank you so much. Bye.